Here's Moscow's largest airport about a year ago. Here's the airport last week. The biggest difference? There are more planes. Some of them shouldn't be here, but most of those planes aren't leaving the country. More than 400 aircraft owned by foreign leasing companies are stuck in Russia after President Vladimir Putin signed a law allowing airlines to take control of the planes in response to Western sanctions. The aircraft, which are valued at $10 billion, are now caught in a battle between Russia and the West, where both are trying to use the planes to punish the other. So why is Russia holding on to these planes? How does their seizure affect the West? And what are the ripple effects of this fight on the broader aviation industry? In response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Western companies leveled a long list of sanctions against the country and directly targeted its aviation industry. From sanctions banning shipments on spare parts and new planes to this. We will join our allies in closing off American airspace to all Russian flights, further isolating Russia and adding additional squeeze on their economy. All of these things are really designed to put Russia's aviation industry under siege. Among the sanctions was a requirement for Western leasing companies to cancel contracts with Russian airlines and get their planes back. And that's a big deal. Western leasing companies own 70% of Russia's 981 jets in service or in storage. If all of those aircraft were returned, the domestic system within Russia would collapse. But Russia wasn't always as reliant on Western aircraft. Here's a Russian Tu-114 seen on a testing flight. Before the 1990s, Soviet Union-era aircraft ruled Russian skies. But when the Soviet Union collapsed, the market opened up, and the need for new aircraft grew. Rather than buying Boeing or Airbus planes, Russian carriers leased them. These aircraft help open up Russian airlines, like national carrier Aeroflot, to the West. Basically what we've seen over the last two decades is really Russia's aviation industry transforming itself from kind of a Soviet era, you know, reputation into really more of a world-class competitive industry. And that's really all been pretty much undone by the invasion and the sanctions that have followed. Under the sanctions, Boeing, Airbus, and their suppliers are prohibited from sending parts and doing maintenance on the leased planes that make up much of Russia's commercial fleet. While this may not have an immediate impact, it could have a lasting one. What that means is that over time, the safety record of Russia's airlines is going to degrade, right? You're going to have aircraft that aren't maintained to the standard that they, they are meant to be. While Russia does manufacture a few aircraft domestically, Cerium data shows much of those planes rely on Western-built engines and parts the country can't get. So what can Russian airlines do? We've already seen reports and you know comments from the Russian government that they had for example, approach China to try and find other ways of bringing in spare parts. It sounds initially like China hasn't been willing to be up that kind of support for the Russian airlines. But a deal with China still wouldn't cover parts manufactured by Boeing and Airbus. For those, experts say Russia will likely end up cannibalizing aircraft, basically using some planes as parts bins to keep others operational. It's not quite clear what the long-term solution is. Um, there's only so many times that, that you can do that. It's expected that, you know, within the next couple of years, this will have a, a serious impact. Meanwhile, the seized aircraft are creating issues for the West. Russia responded to the airspace closures by doing the same, which has raised the question, can the leased aircraft actually be recovered? Easy answer is no, it is, it is not possible. According to Sirium, nearly 80 planes have been returned so far, but those were taken back outside of Russia. Putin's move to seize planes inside the country has created a multi-billion dollar problem for leasing companies and their insurers. It's almost like weaponizing the value of these aircraft because it's going to become a, an insurance issue with the lessors. That issue? Who's going to pay for these planes? They're valued at about $10 billion, but experts say the insured value is even more, perhaps as much as $15 billion. While none of the leasing companies rely solely on the Russian market, Writing off billions isn't something they want to do. If all of those aircraft were written off, it's, it's not a great day for, for lessors, but it wouldn't put a single lessor out of business. Leasing companies could instead pass the cost on to their insurers, where the effect could cause more harm. The biggest issue here is that um, I can't find anyone in the industry who thinks the, ins the, the insurance market can withstand a $15 billion claim. Industry executives have said that this could lead to litigation that may take years to resolve. 
or to requests for government support. Meanwhile, experts say the confidence Western companies had in working in the Russian market has eroded. I think it'll be very difficult um, for, for the lessors to, and, and, and even more broader um, industry to return to, to Russia for years. The extent to which any long-term effects will be felt depends on how long Russia continues to wage war in Ukraine. Even if the invasion is resolved relatively quickly, it's still likely to be this lasting damage, not only on the brands of these Russian airlines, but also on their relationships with, with their Western partners. But the sanctions have already begun to take a toll. A spokeswoman for Moscow's largest airport said this week that the airport had furloughed 20% of its employees, as activity at the airport has declined by approximately 70%. And while these gates look active, these terminals are now closed. That's definitely something that the sanctions are designed to do, is to put pressure on the domestic aviation travel industry in Russia and kind of the knock-on impact that that has on the economy.